Thank you, board, administration, everyone for being here this evening. I'm going to read from our handy dandy intro notes uh, to just kick off this informal meeting. The purpose of this gathering is to hear from and converse with members of the public. Format is an informal discussion forum. The board president holds, holds the authority to restrict the length of time or cease the, the conversation with any participant or in any topic of the conversation. No predetermined agenda topics will be scheduled, but some rules do apply. Employee and or personal matters are considered confidential and therefore should not be brought up. Address the board as a whole. Do not single out individual board members. The majority quorum of the board will be present. No official board actions will be taken. Decisions will not be made. Votes will not be taken. And official meeting minutes will not be taken. With that, I encourage our first guest to uh, uh, step up to the podium. State your name and my forward. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Imes and I'm a professor of communication. I'm here this evening because I was really appreciative of the letter that I read from you, Ms. Schubert, in the principal's email this last week about the referendum. I agree that with the great staff and faculty that we have here at Arrowhead, our antiquated facilities could use updating so that it meets the educational opportunities that our peer schools have. So I was very surprised to see the letter to the editor this last week, signed or two weeks ago, signed by a member of the board as a member of the board. The disclaimer under that is more appropriate to an email than it is to a letter to the editor in the paper. I believe the community reads that as a letter that comes from all of you. You all may have had that discussion and decided otherwise, but I wanted to say that at a time when you're working to pass a referendum and that you need the votes of the community, that getting everyone involved is, is really important. Things like that letter to the editor, I think are off putting to the community and distract from a time when this referendum is really necessary to us. So it would be a shame to see other things distracting from getting our objectives met in that way. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Gabe Lucas. I have one current and one future Arrowhead student. Uh, this is in reference to proposed policy 336. Um, it seems just like yesterday that I was standing at this podium urging against the banning of safe space stickers. I made a prediction that night when I said, perhaps, quote, perhaps the scariest thing about policy 335 is that with only a copy, a paste, and a handful of word substitutions, we will have in writing the next logical progression of this campaign. A policy banning on school property, any and all books, images, videos, or other media denoting a division of race, ideology, sexual orientation, gender preference, or political affiliations, end quote. And yet, here we are, like looking into a crystal ball, the inevitability that our school board would be pursuing a book ban was all too predictable. I guess I did get one thing wrong in assuming that the copy and paste proposed policy 336 would be from the preceding policy 335. When in actuality, it is word for word from a document disseminated by the Center for Renewing America, a right-wing political action group. The plagiarized wording tries to convince the reader that pornography is a growing problem in the schools, books, and media and must be eradicated. Let's be real, though. This isn't about a non-existent porn problem. It's not about graphic descriptions of sex acts. Let's address the elephant in the room. This is a tool to try to erase homosexuality and other LGBT references as if doing so will prevent kids from deciding to be gay. It's an attempt to form our youth into a society that shuns and stigmatizes any gender identity or sexual orientation that doesn't conform to the majority. A society that stuffs gay kids deeper and deeper into their closets. I appreciate that you think you're doing the right thing, but I emphasize to you that you are not on the right side of history with proposed policy 336, and you are doing the opposite of what is in the best interest of your students. 
Thank you, Gabe. I appreciate you being here tonight. Just a little clarity, Gabe, that that is not a proposed policy. That policy is not been brought forth at all. That was uh, swept up in an open records request and uh, it's yet to be determined if it's actually going to come forth. So, so in the email that um, referenced to the policy 336, is that it is not officially a proposed policy, is that what you're saying? It is not officially a proposed policy. But it is something that you're potentially pursuing? Uh, it is something that hasn't even been brought to the board yet. I'm Suzanne Martin, and I had two kids that went to school here, and I used to work here. So this policy 336, or whatever you might number it in the future, is that under consideration? Or are you guys just not going to... I mean, it's it's out there. Define consideration. Pardon me? Can you define consideration? Being considered. By the board? And yes. It hasn't not, even been brought forth. We have not discussed yeah. this. Right. But I mean, none of these policies have been brought forth from any students or parents. We're not talking about brought forth from the students or parents. It has not been brought forth to the full board. Has the, not been pushed down from the people you get your policy language from? Uh, nothing's pushed down. Any board member has the ability to bring forth any ideas for any policy at any time. None of this has even been brought, brought forth for, to the full board. And it's unfortunate that there are activist members of the community that continue to waste our administration's time with open records requests nonstop and to try to find some thing that they're looking for all the time. Uh, this, is not, this is not even a policy that has been discussed by the board or brought forth in any way. To the so it's board. not something you guys are going to do? It has not been brought forth yet. That doesn't answer my question. I started coming here like three years ago when my kids still went to school here. And it was because one of my kids is non-binary and identifies as something other than what six of you would want or you identify as them as. And, and um, it was a bullying issue and it was kind of unique to my kid and all that. And so I show up and start talking to you guys. And then you hear... I'm telling you hundreds of stories from all these other kids and former students about the issues they faced through this discrimination and harassment because of, of what they are. And you keep enacting these policies, even though you are exceeding your authority. And I know that this book thing is on, on its way. You, I don't know why we're playing the different why, why we have this dance. I just don't, you're exceeding your authority. And, and maybe maybe you're sitting there thinking, no, we're not going to exceed our authority on this one. We're not going to try to pull books from here. But but what it is, is it's every time you make one of these moves with the stickers and the pronouns, every step of the way, when you should be taking care of the school, every step of the way, you're exceeding your authority and you're diminishing these kids. And, and, and they'll turn 18 and they'll vote and hopefully things will change. But, but for right now, I really want you to start thinking about the effect that you're having on these kids. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Suzanne, I, I do hope you stay for a meeting um, and, and uh, can hear uh, from a number of different uh, people we have lined up for this evening. You'll be pleased to learn that, in fact, our, our board can walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, we can look after policy and we can look after uh, the facility's needs at the same time. And to that end, uh, we have uh, uh, a presentation being made from our architectural firm, uh, which our board spent, uh, in conjunction with the administration, uh, spent a, uh, a fair amount of time uh, in hiring. Uh, and they've been a, in a facilities uh, uh, assessment process, and, and tonight's the first night we're going to have an update from them. Uh, we have recently, uh, again, uh, a large group of people from the school invested 
heavily in uh, trying to discern a construction management team that will suit the needs of our school best as we move forward. And there will be hours and hours of work put in by our board uh, on planning around the referendum. And so those things will happen. Our board is heavily invested in getting that done. Um, and it might happen at the same time that there are uh, there are investments made in both curriculum um, and policy and personnel and any number of things that the board has proved before. I'm excited to hear about that. And I hope you upgrade the library because I used to work here and it looks exactly the same. I don't want any of those upgrades though to be taking books out that shouldn't be taken out. And honestly, your first priority is these kids and um, you know, I'm excited that you guys are going to finally work on the building. And I hope you do start in the library, but not with the books. And and you got to back off, back off of these kids. Thank you, Suzanne. Just just to comment on that. This is on or not. To comment on that topic, I, I would encourage um, all of the community just to do a little bit of their own own research as to what what books might be found in a library, uh, whether it's a public library uh, or a school library, no matter if it's K through eight or or nine through twelve, and, and just understand what what can be read in today's literature and stop and think: uh, Is all of that literature appropriate for the wide range of students in either of those schools? Is it truly appropriate? Uh, and I would encourage, no matter what side of the fence or line you may lead on, on either of those topics, and just understand there are, is everything that is readily available at the fingertips of any student, whether it's they're 14 because they're a freshman or 19 because they're a senior, there is a huge range of development that is different between that full age group and is all of that content immediately appropriate for that age group. Is that content immediately appropriate out of the eyes of their guardians when they're minors? I'm not suggesting that any of that has anything to do with the, the original thought of 336. I'm just letting you know as a single board member, since a couple of people came up and talked about this, that I would just reference that as my feedback to those, those individuals. Everyone will have a different opinion on what may be appropriate, what may not be appropriate. So I would ask if you're interested, just research to see what's available. Hello, uh, my name is Dan Beneshek. I have a daughter that is a first year uh, here at Arrowhead. So I wanted to ask a couple of questions about process. So 336, I, I, went, I went back for a year and looked at all the meeting minutes for the general board meeting and for the policy committee. And not once was the materials policy or 336 mentioned in any of those meetings for the last 12 months. So when a proposed policy is drafted and sent to an attorney, I'm, I'm hearing that that's a kind of normal course. That's what you normally do, is before you talk about it in the committee and before you talk about it as a board, you spend money having an attorney, form, an attorney firm review it before you even talk about it during a committee meeting? Is that the normal course of action that normally happens? That's an open question. My, my opinion is I agree we need a better process for how policy is brought forth. And at what level do we get legal involved and at what level do all board members know about that? Okay. Um, because to be quite honest, I didn't know about 336 until the open records request and I got an email from you and a few other constituents. So I think there's a gap in the process there that we need to figure out as a board. Um, we started that process with a consultant last year and we need to follow up on that um, to identify what that process looks like and how we can work better as a So I, I second that. Brandon, and I agree with that and I have a problem with the processes that go on here often and uh, regardless of the content of any particular policy, I think we need to work very diligently on processes around here. And you know, it's a, a little bit of a double-edged sword because at some point, Sometimes we get into policy and it's like, did you guys talk about this with the attorney prior to policy? And sometimes it's yes and sometimes it's no. And the question then becomes, at what point do we get to 
you know, legal advice, right? And at what point does the board agree to get that approval? That's because there is a little bit of a double edged sword there. So we just need to figure that out. I'm confident we will. Brandon and Craig, I appreciate that. Um, there's an existing policy today to handle materials in the library, materials on the platform. I think it's under 332, the policy and the procedure. And there's a whole procedure about what happens when a complaint comes in that something is inappropriate. It involves administration. It involves the public. It involves putting together a committee to say, is this appropriate for our environment? Is this appropriate for our, 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 our town and our community? And it's a group that gets together and says, is this appropriate or not? And there are checks and balances, and there are escalations, and there are appeals. All a part of the existing process today. How is that existing process today failing to keep materials out that, that legitimately should be kept out? So again, I, I think it's unfortunate that this got scooped up into an ORR because we, this is not, what you're asking is, is a non-starter because this policy is not even being discussed by the board. Okay, let me, so, let me rephrase, let me rephrase just, it. Just a minute, just a minute, let me say one more thing. Um, we also are in the process of working with a potentially new group, um, NEOLA, to come up with um, a more streamlined way to approach these things. So some of your questions and concerns are going to be answered as we move forward. Right, and NEOLA has not been selected as a partner yet though, correct? Not yet, we're in the, pro there's many things that we're in the middle of. But yes, right, so we're not doing that yet. So we're let's focus on what yet, we're doing. And we're not doing this policy yet. Right, so, so let's focus, here. okay, so let's not talk about 336, let's talk about 332. Does the board think that 332 offers a good level of control for materials in the library and a point for parents or students to come forward and say, I have an issue with some of the content of this curriculum or of what's in the library? Again, you're talking about something that this board has not had the privy, just finish, let me finish, has not had the privy to discuss as a group so to ask to, to, to put that question forward to this group is, is preemptive and also not giving a uh, fair opportunity for each board member to completely know we don't have every single policy and every piece of every policy memorized. I think it's a fair question. Um, to be honest, we have talked about this and it was over, I know you looked over, over a year. Mm -hmm. We did talk about this actually prior to when you started looking into this. One of the actions coming out of that policy meeting was um, one of us or a community member was actually going to test the process of um, mm -hmm. the escalation and you know, getting the stakeholders involved. And I don't know if that happened, but I think it'd be worthwhile for us to follow back up with that. Because I don't I don't have an answer to your question about whether or not the process is working. Maybe we could lean on administration a little bit to understand whether or not they have any complaints. Well, and, and I appreciate that, Brandon. And the question is, is why are we coming up with a new process if we can't articulate what the issue with the current process and policy is? No, that, to me, that to me, that's 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 waste. That's that we're not we're, we're not coming up with a new process. Versus earlier point before it's. So oh, we're spending money for an attorney firm to review it. Uh, well, Bob Butler is on. He's on retainer, so I don't know if he's charging us extra on top of. So he's using retainer hours, though, that we pay for. That's a fair point, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, just, just to clarify, too, like, you know, we end every board meeting, and uh, we, we put the request to board members. Uh, are there any future agenda items? Mm -hmm. And this, this has uh, been we, on we the do list. That, excuse me. We, we do that as well at every committee meeting uh, prior to uh, calling the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so certainly any board member can bring anything forward uh, that they feel uh, is worthy of the board's attention. And so on their own, board members do uh, take uh, consideration of different things and develop those things and bring them forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so Chris was working on something that apparently got scooped up in an open records request um, and uh, to, to put the matter to rest. It has not come before policy. It has not been considered by the full board. Um, whether it will is a whole other question, don't know at this point, um, but to date, there has been no work done. By the, by the larger board? By the Correct. larger board. This Correct. originally came to us as concern from our attorney, because what he saw in other communities is something that we are missing as a protection in our school. This came to us from our attorney. Yeah, from Mr. Butler? Correct. It, it did. 
get to it. And can Correct. I back up? Believe that that uh, email was forwarded out to the entire board. Uh, it was um, a response uh, from Bob Butler around uh, some things pertaining, I believe, to 335. If I'm not mm -hmm. Just uh, picking back on that, yes. And and in conjunction with that, Bob Butler voiced some concerns uh, for the boards. Um, um, in his uh, in his opinion, our lack of coverage um, around um, uh, uh, resources materials that are used by the school, a uh, lack of definition, and he actually proposed uh, a great number of things that the board could consider. Uh, he offered that to us and, and urged us to uh, consider a policy that would address uh, something like this. So that's what happened. Um, so uh, there was, in fact, an impetus uh, that arose out of our own legal around the policy. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the clarity. Uh, I, I have concerns with the board becoming the morality piece and uh, police and the be all and end all of what is in our library and what's in our curriculum without feedback from the larger community from the people that you pay to get hired to select materials, to review materials, and put materials out there. Um, members of this board have already said what they consider to be obscene. And it's not in line with mainstream ideas or forward-looking student-supportive ideals. So if this board becomes that arbiter of every single item, this library is going to be a lot smaller, and it's going to have a lot, lot less material in it. And it's going to be material that's specifically needed by people. Thank you very much for your time. Can, can you clarify what you mean by members of this board have already defined what they believe to be uh, obscene? Members of this board have made it very clear as to what their ideas of obscene and what is religiously appropriate. And to me, that is a very, very serious issue. Um, if this board becomes the, once again, becomes the arbiter of this is what is correct, good, and holy, and this is what is not correct, good, and holy, then it takes the community involvement completely out, except when it comes to who we elect to be on the school. I think that's a stretch to say that the board is in that. I didn't say the whole board. Thank you. I think it's a stretch, quite frankly, to imply that there's an S. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't hear you that there's what? that there are multiple members that have, have uh, somehow signaled that information to you. Um, okay. I, I'm kind of lost on that one. Do, do you mind clarifying? I mean, I, I would prefer not. Um, but you shouldn't was, make a comment like that if you prefer not to clarify. I, I, I find a lot of this discussion, we've spent more time talking about a, a policy that hasn't even gone anywhere. Um, I, I haven't even read anything about it until the, the email I think that you sent, right? Which which is not a condemnation on on the board because there is always work that goes on as soon as board member may start, but but to have heard it right up front at the beginning of the opening session and then spend the rest of the 26 minutes we spent tonight talking about that, which has already been clarified, is honestly I think a waste of time in the community. Okay, I appreciate your input. Um, I included everything in my letter and in my email, so. I have nothing else to add. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We've got about five minutes left. Is there anyone else who'd like to step up to the podium? Okay, if not, I think we'll end the session and we'll uh, start a board meeting at 7 p.m. <laughs>